Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 15th or 16th, depending on where you are in the world, full moon, super moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It means the world to me, and it really helps this channel out. So thank you so very much for doing so. And before we dive into this reading, I just want to say thank you for all your prayers, all your healing energy, your well wishes, your your messages both here on this channel and and sent to me you guys are just you know your support you guys are just amazing i am so blown away by the community that we've built here i'm so honored and so honored to be back here at my happy place reading for you guys so thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart now let's dive into this reading all right so let's clear the energy space raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity this cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right, Cancer, let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. The Six of Wands, Reverse. We have the Two of Cups. The Ten of Pentacles, Reversed. Okay, let me just lay these all out. And I'll tell you them. Interesting. All right, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, let me make sure you can see it all. Oh, good. You can. Okay. So this is a bit of an intense full moon. This full moon is a super moon. It's the last super moon of the year. It is in Taurus. The sun is in Scorpio. And we see the Hierophant come through right here. Now the Hierophant represents Taurus energy. So that energy is coming forward with tenacity and with determination. But we can find ourselves being a little bit stubborn, a little bit like digging our heels in. It has to be a certain way. And having a bit of of difficulty letting ourselves be vulnerable and letting ourselves be open to our hearts and the way forward in our own creative bliss so just being mindful about that during this time cancer is going to be really important for us because we're going to be sitting there looking at things and being really inspired but then finding ourselves way too much in our own heads overthinking over analyzing and then it's like we put all the blessings on hold because it's like oh no no no, no. I, I can't possibly have these right it's not the right time Everything is imperfect. The new motto, instead of perfection, is close enough is good enough. It's okay. You know, unless you're doing rocket science or, or surgery, you know, <laughs> close enough is good enough type of thing. We're crowned here with the Six of Wands. And that's where it all starts. So the Six of Wands is, with the Six of Wands reverse, we're not celebrating ourselves. We're not seeing ourselves as worthy of celebration. And we are, are looking at all the little nitpicky things that people bring forward as people do, you know, oh, you know, you, you did this, you got this far, well, you could have done this, you could have done this better. And that's what we're going to do to ourselves. And it's kind of this, the thing we hate that other people do. So just be mindful about that will be very quick to give somebody else a compliment to, you know, be very loving and compassionate towards others. But to ourselves, 
we're going to be like, mm, you know, was that really good? Did you do your best? You should have done better type of thing. So just be mindful about that because the two of cups is right here. That's the minor arcana lovers card. It is a sense of love and connection and coming together. It's healing. It is a lifting of you know, the burdens of the heart and a real sense of like, oh, I'm stepping in to, to my happy place, into my love, into my joy, into what brings me bliss here on this earthly plane. Now with the 10 of pentacles reversed, we could be, we could have gotten a few kicks in the teeth with what really brings us joy. And we could be thinking, you know, I'm not going to be successful. Or we can be looking at other people in our family line or people who are like us and say, oh, well, you know, this person who I so identified with isn't successful or, you know, got, you know, told off or put down. And so I'm going to hold myself back type of thing. We need to look at ourselves and say, I am meant to shine. You know, some people are, are meant to be superstars on the red carpet. Okay. That's cool for them. Other people are meant to shine in their own world and in a quiet way. And I really feel like those people who quietly shine, those people who add joy and brilliance and, and love into the world, they should be honored more. You know, movie stars and, you know, stars that we, you know, have their name plastered everywhere, they're one thing. But people who who love and connect, you know, in the day-to-day, -day, in the real world, that's a completely other thing. And here, it's saying, you know, look at your blessings. Look at your gifts. And you have had struggles in the past. And you have doubted and you have feared and you have seen struggles in your line. But that's not your definition. That's not who you are. You are the love. And sometimes being the love is, is really hard because the heart can break and the heart can hurt. And the heart can feel like, you know, I need walls. I need barriers. I need all this stuff around me to protect me because I shine so bright. And here we become very critical about ourselves or we've had people, this is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or just, you know, kind of, I'll say spicy people in our lives that have been more than, you know, quick to tell us off and that we didn't follow the rules and we didn't do this right. And we didn't do that right. And we were trying our best. And it's like, mm -mm, no, you don't get to do that. Especially if we've seen people like unjustly accused of things or really go through really hardships that were none of their, like, we could say, okay, it was their own making, they did X, Y, Z wrong or something like that, but like the punishment was amplified to what they what they did. So just be mindful about that here. We could be carrying a heavy heart for that. With the star reversed, we do have a tendency to be in our own head. We can be having a bit of difficulty with Aquarius energy, time frame, January 20th to February 18th. But this is also, you know, kind of sitting in the echo chamber of our own thoughts. And it's very much sitting in the quiet of our own thoughts instead of illuminating the light from the outside and the inspiration and the joy it's like oh no i'm just not measuring up and that can be amplified for us during this moon because we're going to have a tendency to hold ourselves to really unrealistic expectations that make us feel like oh i'm just not getting ahead whereas if we step back and we were as kind to ourselves as we would be to strangers we would see that oh wow I'm doing a really good job. Temperance here is needing to bring things into balance. That is also Sagittarius energy. Time frame November 22nd to December 21st. So we'll be going into, you know, Sagittarius time frame. We we can feel out of balance and in a sense, like this isn't where I thought I would be by this time this year. And that's okay. 2024 has been one heck of a year, right? It's been it's been odd. And what we're going to see here with temperance, it's like, I need to come back into balance because the veil is being lifted from my eyes and I'm seeing a way that I need to move forward in power of voice. You are going to see that your voice, your words, the way you communicate is really heightened during this time. If we can kind of look at and acknowledge, okay, I'm being harsh on myself. I'm, I'm you know, taking on kind of the pain of others, trying to lessen their load and, and you know, being really intense on me. But now I need to move forward and be my own hero. I need to not get in my own way and say, I can't when I can. And the veil is being lifted. You, you start to see the way that you need to move forward for what you love and what you desire. And some of the things that you're going to see during this time, Cancer, you're going to be like, huh, you know, that's kind of rude. I didn't like that. Or, huh, like, you know, I didn't realize 
that that situation was taking advantage or that that anger was coming from there or that, you know, pain of the heart was coming from there. Okay, I see it. I'm acknowledging it. I, didn't, I don't like necessarily what I'm seeing. But knowing is better than not knowing. And now with the nine of wands, I can move forward, defending myself, knowing what it is that I want, but also not having to be in the midst of this battle all the time. There's a path here of calm and of freedom. And, and Spirit is saying, you know, will you take it? Will you take it? Will you calm and center your life and take the path forward that brings you insight, that has you trusting your intuition? Taurus energy is very intuitive time. So with the supermoon in Taurus, it's a very intuitive time. If we can get out of our own heads, get out of our own way, you know, stop, you know, the perfection, you know, angle of everything that sometimes negative Taurus energy can bring, or not sometimes negative Taurus energy can bring. And we can bring forward the protector. We can bring forward the, the stubborn determination, the one that says, no, we are going to get through this. You know, that glorious, loving, nurturing energy of the Taurian. Then cancer, I mean, you go so beautifully with that energy. It's like, oh yeah, I got this. Oh yeah, I'm now stepping into the power of my heart and the, the purpose of what I desire. And I'm building it here on the earthly plane. And that's what this, me this moon is showing us is that we're having a bit of fear taking the abstract of what our heart desires and building it on this earthly plane. We might have to scale it back. You know, it's kind of like building a, a diorama before building a house, right? You scale it back, you do it on a small scale or building a dollhouse or, or something like that, where it's like, okay, I'm going to build it on small scale. And that might be the happiness. Like you might not need the grand mansion that some people need, like to prove to everybody else, oh, this is what my happiness is. It's, it's this abstract thing or this, you know, concrete thing here that's huge. It can be small and it can be beautiful. And sometimes we forget that in our world. We think bigger is better always. But a small contentment within our hearts and our souls, that is an exquisite thing. So, of course, I got really excited and just jumped right into the reading. So let's see what Spirit has to say here. Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly. This is the Pelican, and it says, choose to follow the path of forgiveness and raise your vibration. And that's it. It's a sense of, like, the path of forgiveness. I forgive you know, that which I cannot change, right? But I also forgive that which didn't go right, the the prosperity or the bounty or the abundance that I thought was going to be down this certain path, but that was colored in differently, you know, that was was marred by somebody else's sorrow and, and somebody else's pain. And we feel like, oh, I had to pay for that. It's like, no, it was, I had to, it's not, you didn't have to pay for it. It's like, Spirit is saying here, I learned. I learned so much just from observing and spirit wants you to know that about you. Like the fact that you observe not only with your eyes, but with your heart has taught you so much cancer that has really elevated you to the next level. So let's see what energy we have to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is the world reverse. This is, yeah, this is exactly what the whole reading has been about. The word reverse is, is going too much into yourself, right? It's not thinking about how I stand out in the world. It's kind of thinking, how does the world judge me? How does the world see me? You know, so many of us, when we start reading the tarot, one of the first things we, we ask is like, oh, how do people see me? What do they think about me? And, you know, the tarot likes to teach us the lesson of, it's not about what they think about you. It's about what you think about you. That's so important. And your connection with spirit. So here... That is, that is very interesting. That spirit's like, hey, listen, you know, connect with the way that you stand in this world and the beauty that you are bringing forward. It brings us then to our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Ooh. And this is dreams reverse. So this is the, the third eye chakra. Spirit is talking to you a lot through your dreams, cancer, and has been ever since you were little. Like, I would bet money that... You had really beautiful dreams, really like if not beautiful dreams that you remembered or beautiful, like, you know, imaginary world. And I, I would even go so far as to say a lot of you were told that that imaginary world, that dream world was was childish, was silly. Like you had to come back into reality. And yet that dream world is such a powerful part of you. But you kind of closed off that connection to the third eye. So being able to connect with the third eye, tapping over your third eye is highly beneficial. Being able, like rubbing your, like that that bump where your neck meets your your shoulders, that can also really help with breaking up 
blockage in the third eye or connecting the brain with the spinal fluid, you know, type of thing. And here, what we're going to see is that once you acknowledge the blockage within the third eye, it starts to unblock. Like it's like, oh, okay, I'm not seeing my dreams. And then all of a sudden your dreams start to come forward again. And it can be very overwhelming because there can be some trauma around this. So be calm and gentle with yourself. But your dreams will start to come forward again in a way that you're like, oh, wow, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that. So let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. The blossoming reverse, angels and spirit guides. Nurturing, angels. Ooh. Okay. Hunger. And resistance reverse. Angels and spirit guides. Show them clearly. Guide this reading. I love the full moon in Cancer coming forward. That is awesome. So that means your power is really coming forward during this moon. Angels and spirit guides. Okay. So we have you blossoming here, but we have it reversed. It's almost like I'm afraid to really step into what I truly want and let myself shine the way that I want to. What will people think? How will people see me? How will I see myself? We have nourishment here being reversed. You need to feel your soul. Your body is craving something. It's not like craving food-wise, though it, it could be, but I'm seeing this more as like craving art, craving music, craving stories, craving something that was very important to you, especially when you were small. It was something that you could get lost doing dancing, you know, whatever. It, it was. I see it as, as more of a creative outlet or for you, it was a creative outlet. Even if you would say like, oh, I really loved XYZ. It could be like playing video games, right? And people would be like, oh, that wasn't a creative outlet. But for your energy and your soul, it was. Then like, that's just the way you have to see it. It's like, oh, but this is me type of thing. You need to nourish yourself again. Your hunger, your hunger is for that nourishment to bloom forward. And it's it's here with this moon where we start to say, I don't have to resist it, right? I don't have to grow, like being that tree that grows out of that that rock on the the edge of a cliff, you know, type of thing. I don't have to be, I don't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that hard because I'm now seeing myself. And you're probably a highly sensitive person, you know, Cancer, that is probably a, a big part of who you are. Or if Cancer falls in your chart, especially in your Venus, you would be a highly sensitive person. And you could have been told, you know, that was wrong. And that could be part of the, the generational curse because it feels like a generational curse. It could have been a father that told you, oh my gosh, you're too sensitive or a parent. You know, it comes across very masculine energy, but you know, however that statement rings true for you, it could have been a teacher, but it was the sense of you should dim your light because you're not like everybody else. But fitting in is, is like torture. So don't do it to yourself. It's like, it's time to be free. And here, and I know I said that as a question mark, but spirit is like, isn't it time to be free? Like, you're not going to be what they were comparing you to. It's like the quiet artsy kid being compared to the gregarious cheerleader. You're, you're not going to be that. So let's be kind to ourselves. It moves us there to a personal issue reaches resolution and it's the full moon in cancer. And it's like, it's that acceptance of who we are and what we love. And then all of a sudden we start to shine. It brings us to don't let pride get in the way. And that's reversed because we were kind of a little bit in our own egos. And I know that sounds very negative to say, but it's just like I'm human living a human experience. So of course, I'm going to be you know, aware of my human body. We don't want to let go of our ego completely because that could be, we want to take care of ourselves, right? We want to be proud of who we are and how we're moving forward in this world and how we're contributing to society. So an ego is important, but being ruled by the ego of comparison, that's the thief of joy. And then we have the new moon in Taurus. And remember that the full moon is the, the blessing of, of a new moon, right? A new moon six months ago, right? It's the new moon in Taurus six months ago that brought us to the fulfillment of the full moon in Taurus here and now. And it says prosperity lies ahead. And here with the new moon in Sagittarius reverse, it says luck is on your side and we can just not feel lucky. It's like, it's, it's just so hard. And, and sometimes it is, sometimes life is harder at some moments than it is, than it feels at others. But also know that in that time where we feel like, oh, life is harder for us, somebody could feel like, oh, life is easier for me right now or like vice versa. So it's all part of our own journey and our own story. 
And here, knowing and giving yourself permission to be lucky and knowing that you are a lucky person, that's going to be important. It moves us to our subconscious. Spirit message, and this is the blue jay, and it says the time is right to act access and master your abilities because it is and i love the blue jay do so with humility and control and that is beautiful it's like it's your time it's your time cancer it moves us here to the energy to be mindful of it's the lovers so when we're told to be mindful of the lovers it really brings an element of lust so this is gemini energy we can be having a hard time with a gemini may 21st to june 20th but it can be we're lusting after something it doesn't have to be a relationship though it could be it it's just like something becomes all consuming in our mind and it's going to be whether better when we possess it when we have it everything will be better and it's like we're going to find out that it's not necessarily going to be that case it's like life is better when i start loving me not lusting after what the world tells me to lust after it moves us then to the inner child reverse this is the heart chakra it's one of my favorite cards as well where there's a blockage in the heart energy because again you were told when you were small that part of your dreams part of what you desire was was silly was foolish and that wounded that inner child so connecting with that inner child connecting with your heart giving yourself permission to open yourself to love and and respecting of you that's going to be so important that like is going to be everything during this moon because taurus energy is, is that protective loving parent you know not the like I'm going to wrap you up in, in, in like bubble paper and keep you in the closet parent, but like that sense of, and of course that's just a joke, but that sense of, I love you. I, I protect you and I support you and I'll be there to help you when you fall down, but you're going to learn to fall down. And we're saying that to our own inner child self, like we had to learn how to fall down. And sometimes it takes a really long time to pick ourselves up and to be compassionate and heal from the wounds that we've we've experienced. It moves us then to the two of wands. We're very contemplative during this time. There's a, there's a door closing. There's something ending. And we can really feel like it's a big deal. Like, no, I don't want that to be that way. And yet we're going to be in the long run. It's like, oh, wow, I should have ended that sooner. I should have released that sooner. It moves us then to our Luna message, which is faith reversed. And the new moon in, in Scorpio reverse, it says work through your fears. And that's reverse because our fears can be very big right now. They can seem very big in the shadows of the super moon. The super moon, you know, brings forward our power and it can it can bring forward what we're feeling and what we're feeling and what we're powerful in is is the connection with the heart, connection with what we love, connection with the with the mind. And if we don't embrace our faith within ourselves, it can just be be fear that comes forward during this time and we we could be like oh you know what that fear is a perfect wall and spirit's like it's not though it's not a perfect wall it's time to shatter it and see yourself walking through to the other side because there's greatness waiting for you all right cancer i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i'm sending loving healing energy to you guys always and i'm so grateful for each and every one of you so let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of the supermoon and of ourselves. And remember, we're ruled by the moon. So when there's a supermoon, when things are intense, they're super intense for us. You know, when things are introspective, they're super introspective for us. So the intensity of this moon makes sense because the moon cycle is a very intense process for us. And once we realize that within our bodies and that it affects us, we can be kinder to ourselves. All right. And once again, this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Cancer. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.